So part two, as we now transition, is we're going to begin to study 1 Peter. If you have your Bibles, go there. And we're going to get deeper into God's final appeal here. Now, as you're turning there, I have here on the screen again, Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, where the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive or abide with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. And again, we saw that the people chose, the people chose, look at this, the people chose their fleshly desires over the appeal of God's spirit. Okay? And then... I want to read quickly this quote here by the Spirit of Prophecy, and this is in the context of the days of Noah. And she says here in Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 1, page 70, God gave, what's the word? All. Again, context, days of Noah. God gave all who, what's the word, chose an opportunity to repent to turn to Him. Amen. God gave all who chose an opportunity to repent and turn to Him, she says. Are you with me? This is a God of mercy, love, and long-suffering. We're in 1 Peter. Here we go. You see, even Peter... Even Peter, who was a disciple of Christ, here brings out God's final appeal to this world in the days of Noah. And what we're going to do is we're going to read verses 18 through 20, and then we're going to go back and dissect what he's saying. Make sense? So the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, what verse? 18. And the Word of God says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, amen, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom He also went and preached to the spirits in prison, for who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. Let's stop there. With that in mind, let's go back to verse 18 and let's put the pieces together. Let's begin our study here in verse 18. What is Peter saying here? Okay, now. Verse 18 says again. For Christ also suffered once for sins, okay? How many times did God suffer for sins? Once, okay? You need to know that during communion, during the Lord's Supper, here we understand that it is a symbol of God's suffering, but we don't sacrifice Christ every time we have the Lord's Supper, amen? Because the Bible says that he had to suffer just one time. He died just one time for sins. You with me? Then it says, the just for the unjust, he died for us, that he might bring us to God. Now look at this. Being put to death in the flesh, right? Christ died on the cross. Are you with me? Okay. Then it says here, but made alive by who? By the Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit here, capital S, okay? So let's stop there. Let's understand what's happening here. We know that Jesus died on the cross. Amen. He then, on the first day of the week, resurrected. He went from death to life. Yes? Yes. Obviously here, according to this verse, the Holy Spirit had a big part in this, right? It says there again that he was made alive by the Spirit of God. Okay? So here's my question. 
we see here that the Spirit was trying, or what happened is, is that the Spirit brought Christ back to life, okay? From dead to life. Now, look at verse 18. I'm sorry, 19. Okay. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Let's stop there. I want you to be awake and think here of what Peter is saying, please. Again, verse 18, the bottom of verse 18 says, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by who? By the Spirit. Verse 19, by whom also he? Who's by whom here? Yes. Yes. Look at it. Look at it. Again, last of a, of verse 18, God being put, uh, to, uh, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. So, according to verses 18 and 19, Christ and his preaching was made or was by whom was that was Christ preaching? By whom was this uh, being? Uh, sp uh, by whom was this preaching being made of? It was by the Spirit. Okay, by the Spirit. Now look at the screen here. Notice how Christ preached to those spirits in prison. He did it by the Holy Spirit. So whatsoever Christ did in preaching during this period of time, he did it by the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Okay, again, bottom of verse 18 said, but made alive by the Spirit. By whom? By the Spirit, also Jesus, he went and preached to the Spirit in prison. So again, how did Christ preach? It was by the what? Holy Spirit. Okay, you with me so far? Okay, Christ preached by what? By the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a misunderstandings of these verses we're going to see. Some people think that these verses are saying that when Christ died on the cross, that he sort of went to some like place in some celestial part of the world to sort of preach to the people in hell or some purgatory down there. But that is not what these verses are saying. It's saying here that the preaching that Christ did was done by whom? The Holy Spirit, okay? Now, that's what we see here. Now we have another question. Look at the screen. With that in view, let's ask this. When was the preaching done? Okay, we're asking questions. By whom did Christ did the preaching by whom? By the Holy Spirit. Crystal clear there. Crystal clear, okay? Now we're going to ask, when was this preaching done? Are you with me? Verse 20 tells us. Who formerly were disobedient when once the divine, what's the wording there? Long-suffering waited in whose day? In the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls were saved through the water. Here we see that the words long-suffering, which we saw in part one, are also used here by Peter. Can you say amen? That Christ was long-suffering during the days of Noah. Hallelujah! Now look, we also see here in the word waited, okay, it is rendered, can be rendered like this as well. Listen carefully. The Greek can also be rendered, the long suffering of God waited patiently. You see, I again want to vindicate the God of the universe. 
This is not a God who was chomping at the bit to destroy people. Amen. Even Peter brings out that God was long-suffering and patiently waiting for the people to repent. Are you with me? But here's the question. According to verse 20, when was this preaching being done? When? Okay. Wh whose days? Days of Noah. When what was being built? The ark. There it is. Okay, look at this. According to Peter, Christ, the, the Spirit, was part of bringing Christ from the dead to back to life. Are you with me? From death to life. That's key to understand. And then Peter says that Christ was preaching, but by whom? By the Holy Spirit. When was this preaching done by the Holy Spirit? According to verse 20, in the days of Noah. I'm going to say it again. This is not a picture of Christ at his death going to the, the bowels of some mystical place on earth there trying to preach to those in, in hell or purgatory. No, 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 no. You have to let Peter describe what's happening here. What Peter is saying, that Christ went and preached, not in person, but by who? The Holy Spirit, during which days? Noah. And he was long-suffering and waited. Peter is saying again that the Spirit, just like he brought life to the body, back to Christ, are you with me? Was trying to bring life back to a dead, ungodly people. Are you with me? Christ did preach, but it wasn't some mystical place. No, no, he preached by the Spirit, okay? So, by the Spirit, when, Peter? During the days of Noah, when the ark was being built. Why? Because God was long-suffering and patiently waiting, and his final appeal. Are you with me? Now, Look at the screen. So the preaching was actually done while the ark was being built in whose day? Days of Noah. Now, our next question. Okay, you guys with me so far? Okay. By whom was Christ preaching? By the Holy Spirit. And in what days was Christ preaching during the Holy, uh, by the Holy Spirit? In the days of? Noah, while the ark was being what? Built, okay? Now our question is, is to whom was the preaching done? What's the question? To whom? Now, we're again in verse 19, okay? By whom, by the Spirit, also he, Jesus, went and preached to the, to the spirits in prison. Now, we're going to have to allow the Bible and let the context let us uh, 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 come to the conclusion of what it means by the spirits in prison. Are you with me? I can't bring my preconceived ideas of what I think that means. I have to let the context and the B-I-B-L-E tell us what that means. Amen. You with me? Okay. We already know, we already know that the preaching was being done during whose day? Days of Noah, okay? Well, the question is, who, who was Noah preaching to? Because look at this, who, who wrote 1 Peter? Who wrote 1 Peter? Peter. Who wrote 2 Peter? Same Peter, right? Now look what he says here, it's on the screen. In 2 Peter, he says, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of the eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the who? Of the ungodly. So, the preaching of Noah was to the antediluvian world in the days of Noah, the hearts of men and women were only evil continually. They were in bondage to sin, 
to live a life of sin, not only of evil doing, but, but to unbelief in Noah's message led by the Spirit of Christ. You see, through the Spirit, Christ, Christ was preaching, look at this, by the Spirit, and the Spirit was using Noah to preach the Word. Let me say it again. Christ was preaching to the people of the antediluvian world, look at this, by the Holy Spirit, through who? Through Noah. You with me? Let me say it again. Christ was preaching to the antediluvian world by the Holy Spirit, through who? Through Noah. Now, why would Peter use the words spirits and in prison to refer to the ungodly during the days of Noah? Well, here's the thing. Go to Numbers 27 if you have your Bibles, because in the Bible, the word spirit can refer to living people again. The word spirit here in the Greek, we're going to see is just the same thing said here in Numbers 27. In the Bible, in the where? In the Bible. It uses the word spirits to refer to living men and women. Numbers 27, Numbers 27. We're going to read verses 15 and 16. Again, in the Bible, the word spirits can refer to living men and women. Numbers, okay? Numbers 27. Numbers is right before Deuteronomy. Therefore, therefore Numbers is the fourth book of the Bible. Numbers 27. Look at verses 15 and 16. In the Bible, the term spirits can refer to living men and women. Here we are in Numbers 27, beginning in verse 15 and 16. The Bible says, Then Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, verse 16, Let the Lord, the God of the, what's the word there? Ah, of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. Okay, it says there, let the God of the spirits of all flesh. Now, look at the screen here and let's unpack this word. The word spirit here is the Hebrew word ruach, okay, and which means breath. The NIV renders this verse this way, may the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over his community. Do you see that there? The Bible is saying here that the God, the word spirit there means ruach, it means breath, the breath of life. Let the God who gives breath of life to all flesh, are you with me? It's referring here to living beings, not some floating doo-doo-doo-doo type of like spirits. No, 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 no. The word spirit here, again, is the Hebrew word ruach, which means breath. All the verse is saying here is that the God who puts the breath of life, which, of course, we are alive when we have the breath of life in our lungs, uh, um, uh, uh, who gives breath to the living things, appoints someone over this community. Again, the word spirits refers to those who are alive and breathing. Are you with me so far? Go back to 1 Peter chapter 3.18. We see the Greek equivalent here in this verse. In chapter 3 of 1 Peter, our verse here, verse 19, we see the same Greek, uh, we see the Greek word here equivalent to what we just saw in the Hebrew, okay? Let's read verse 19 again of 1 Peter chapter 3. By whom, by the Holy Spirit, also he, Jesus, went and preached to the spirits in prison. And the Greek word there for spirits is the Greek word pneuma. You might have heard of pneumatic tires, yes or no? Pneumatic, pneuma, air. The Greek word pneuma, which means breath, is the equivalent word for ruach of the Hebrew word, same. Equivalence. Are you with me? So, here on the screen, I have it here. It says, the Greek word here, pneuma, breath, is the equivalent of the Hebrew word ruach, which we just saw in Numbers. 
The term we are seeing here for spirit are those who are alive because of God's breath of life, the breath, the spirit that God gives us. Again, the term spirit is referring to people who are alive, those who the breath of life is still in. Are you with me so far? Okay. So again, the words spirits here, in the context we see that the spirits in this verse is referring to those who were living in the days of Noah, living flesh people, those who had the breath of life still in their nostrils, who were breathing and still had an opportunity to repent and desire to follow God. Are you with me? Okay. Now we have to unpack what it means by prison. Okay. So again, in verse 19 it says, by whom? By the Spirit. Also he, Jesus, went and preached to the spirits or the, the living people there in what? In prison. Let's go to Isaiah 42. Let's begin to unpack what prison means. Why does it say that those there, the people living in the days of Noah, were in prison? What does that mean? Isaiah. We just saw again that Christ was preaching by the Holy Spirit and then using Noah, of course, to appeal to the living people there who had still the breath of life in their nostrils. That's what the Bible is saying here. And it says they were in prison. What does that mean? We're in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 42. Yes, Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, and let's let the Bible describe or tell us what does it mean that they were in prison, those living in the days of Noah who were alive still with the breath of life. The Bible says in Isaiah 42, beginning in verse 6 and 7, Isaiah 42, verses 6 and 7, it says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and I will keep you to give you as a covenant to the people. As a light to the Gentiles, this is a messianic prophecy, verse 7, to open the blind, what, eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. So, does the term prison mean a literal building where you're sort of stuck and can't leave and you're incarcerated? Yes or no? No. It means in the prison house of darkness, the prison house of sin. Are you with me? Were the people in the antediluvian world, were they prisoners to their sin? Yes or no? They were. Okay. And was God trying to appeal to them? who still had the breath of life in their nostrils, hence the spirits, which means living people there with the breath of life in their nostrils, was God appealing to them by the Holy Spirit, uh, Christ was preaching to them by the Holy Spirit through Noah to, to, the living, to the living people there with still the breath of life in their nostrils to get them to come out of this prison house of sin and ungodliness and corruption. Is that what we're seeing here? Yes! This is not talking about, again, Christ after he died, that he went somewhere to appeal to those in hell. No, 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 that's impossible. The Bible says the dead know nothing. The dead don't, they're, they're sleeping. That, that, that couldn't even happen here. This is talking about the days of Noah. Are you with me? God's final appeal to this world to turn to him. On the screen here I have, so it was by the Spirit by which Christ preached through Noah to men and women or spirits who were captives or prisoners of Satan and sin. Are you with me? Go to John 8, 34. Look what Jesus says in John 8, 34. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John 8, verse 34. Here even Peter brings out God's long-suffering and appeal that Christ himself was preaching to those people in the days of Noah by the Spirit through Noah. And I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but here's the thing. As it was in the days of 
Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Will God, will Christ preach to this world in the very last days again by the Spirit through His people? Mm. We'll get to that in a minute. John 8, 34, look what Jesus says here. John 8, verse 34, the Bible says, and Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. If you're a slave, you're in bondage, yes or no? Look what Paul says here, it's on the screen, Romans 7. Making me a, what's the word there? A prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. Christ has always desired to free us from this prison house of sin and ungodliness. And he was trying to do that here in a world, look at this, they had constantly turned their back on the Spirit and God appealing to them, appealing to them, and he raises, no, he says, Christ says, I'm going to preach to them myself by the Holy Spirit through Noah. I'm going to give them that final appeal to get them out of this prison, this prison of darkness and sin or the law of sin. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke 4, look what Jesus says here. Matthew, Mark, Luke chapter 4. Beginning in verse 17. Luke chapter 4, beginning in verse 17. God truly is gracious, merciful, and long-suffering. You see, who was I talking to? I was talking to Brenda, I believe. When I said that when the judgment process comes, and we're going to study about the judgment here, uh, Sabbath mornings, that through the judgment we're going to see that those who chose not to be in eternity, they're going to see it wasn't because God wasn't doing all he could to see them there. That God reveals that he did all he could to see these people during this time repent and be saved. Amen. And people will see that throughout all generations. That if you're not in eternity, it's not God's fault. He's done everything and is doing all he can. But it is the people, our hearts. God is good. This is not a God who, oh, I'm going to bring that flood on him. No, he appealed. It was the people's rejection of God. Luke 4. Luke 4, beginning in verse 17, the Bible says, And he, Jesus, was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recover the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of what? of the Lord. Look at on the screen here, I, uh, Psalm 102, 19 and 20, the Bible says, for he looked down from the height of his what? Who is he here? God. And God looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from where? From heaven the Lord viewed the what? Earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to release those appointed to death. And again, what was the Spirit that did? It was the Spirit who brought death back to life in the life of Jesus, was trying to do the same thing there, to bring a dead people who were dead in their trespasses, and he was trying to resurrect them and live spiritually and be alive spiritually. Amen. That's why Peter said, the same Spirit the same Spirit, the same Spirit who brought the power, the life back to Christ, by whom? 
in the days of Noah, as Christ preached to them by the Spirit, was also trying to resurrect their deadness back to life. Amen. Are you with me? All right. A few more slides here, and we're going to finish it. So I have here on the screen, Jesus frees us from the bondage, slavery, prison of sin. The mighty power of the Spirit opens the prison of sin to set the captives, to get them to go free. Amen. In conclusion, when Peter is telling us here, what Peter is telling us here is simply that Christ, by the Holy Spirit, was present while Noah what? Preached. Christ was there through or uh, by the Holy Spirit using Noah to speak or preach conviction to the people's hearts that were led by Satan, his influence to reject Noah's message. The people were in the prison of sin in darkness that was leading to death, so Christ because of his abundant mercy and grace, by the Spirit, using Noah, appealed to them to come into the ark and be saved. Can anybody say amen for God? I have such a burden to help vindicate who God truly is. God has no desire or uh, uh, any, God has no, um, uh, what's the wording the Bible says? God has no uh, um, uh, joy uh, of the death of the wicked. Here it is. Here it is. Here's my final point here. Here it is. And we're going to look at this again. Look at this. You see, the same spirit who rose Christ from the dead tried to bring life to those who are spiritually dead during the end of the living world. Here it is. Peter is using the contrast. Just like the Spirit brought life back to Christ, so he was trying to bring life back to the dead world, especially in God's final appeal through Noah, Christ preached. Now here's the thing. Look, it's on the screen. It's on the screen. The amazing thing is, Christ, by the Holy Spirit, spoke through Noah, who prepared the inhabitants of the earth for the flood. So will it be in the last days, just before Christ's second coming. Christ will speak by the Holy Spirit, through Spirit-filled Christians, to prepare the world for the second advent or coming and its destruction and bring to life those who are spiritually dead today. And how do I know that's true? Because Jesus said, as it was in the days of... And in the days of Noah, Christ preached to an ungodly world who was turning their backs to him, turning his backs to him as error and deception was increasing and love and, and truth are, are, are being trampled upon. Christ says, I, I'm going to appeal to the world just like I did here by the Holy Spirit, but now through my remnant people. Christ, God, is doing the same thing today as he did in the antediluvian world. He is preaching by the Holy Spirit through his people. Amen. And what's that message? Go to Revelation 14 quickly. Yes, we're, about, we're done here. Revelation 14. Revelation 14. What's this message of appeal and judgment and warning? Let me ask you a question. Was Noah preaching a message of righteousness and judgment? Yes or no? Yes. We're in Revelation 14, and let's see that the same message is being preached today, a message of righteousness, warning. Verse 6, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, universal message to everybody, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. Here we go. Why? For the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven, earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This, my friends, if you've been with us Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night, is an appeal and now the warnings. Verse 8, another angel followed him saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. 
that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. With that, go to Revelation 18 quickly. It is repeated now with a louder voice. Revelation 18, the loud cry now in the very last days. Revelation 18, verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having a great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, verse 2, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons and a prison. Woo! What's the word? and a prison for every foul spirit and cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. It's the same appeal. It's the same appeal. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your sin and come to me. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. Verse 5, for her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. A world, a world, a world that has turned their backs on God and his love for them. This is what's happening. And now back to chapter 14, the last, the last appeal here, last appeal, greatest warning of all the Bible, beginning in verse 9, then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out in full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of, of, of the Lamb. Verse 11, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. And here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. The same God who appealed to a world to turn from their ungodliness and sin. You know, sin hurts us, right? Hurts God, hurts us, hurts both parties. And God wanted to release them from this prison. And God sent his spirit. And his final appeal was now Christ's preaching by his spirit through Noah. So look at this again. If you reject the preacher, you're actually rejecting him who is preaching through you. Does that make sense there? So by the people rejecting Noah, who were they really rejecting? Christ. Because he was preaching by the Spirit. Are you with me? Say it again. By rejecting Noah, they were actually rejecting Christ and his word. Are you with me? So in the last days, those who reject the proclamation of God's people who are being used by the Spirit and Christ is really preaching through them, who, are really, who is really the world rejecting? Christ and his word. But last time I checked, there's still a little bit of time left. Michael hasn't stood up yet. There's still some time for those who are in prison. Many of us might still be in prison too. May we allow God to free us from the prison house.
I want to go on record today to say that truly God is good. Who here today at home Maybe you haven't fully surrendered to God and His Spirit working in you, desiring to free you from that prison house. And then He wants to use you to give the final appeal to a dying world. What a privilege. Maybe you desire for God to free you from that prison house of slavery, of sin, and to be used by God as Noah to preach to the world today. Anybody desire for that to happen in their lives? Anybody? If you're at home, you can raise your hand. You know, I say this all the time, but I, this is serious business. I think if I die before Christ comes on my tomb, it's going to say, he always said, it is serious business. It's serious business. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us.